Hey everybody, if you're using the video chat functionality in Foundry, you may have noticed that the quality is not always great. Uh, I'll have some screen recordings of my Foundry video chat from before and after my Jitsi server playing for a bit so you can see the difference it made for me. Uh, just keep in mind that not everyone's circumstances will be the same as mine, and for some people it works great, and for some other people it doesn't work at all. Uh, the reason it's often not great though is because it's using something called peer-to-peer -peer networking. What that means simply is that everybody is sending their video to everybody else. So if there's five people in your party, that means that you're uploading your video to four of them because you're not uploading to yourself, uh, which can take up a lot of bandwidth, it can slow down other people on your network, and it can lead to a lot more lost frames. Today we're going to take a look at Jitsi, which will make it so everyone only has to upload their video once and the server will disseminate it to everybody else. In the same scenario, you're now using a quarter of the amount of bandwidth you were using before, and this is helpful if you're hosting Foundry on your computer, in the cloud, or with a hosting service like Foundry Server or The Forge, which I have a video on as well, by the way. Uh, a quick warning though, this will probably be one of my most technical videos. I have done everything that I can to simplify it, and including making a long list of copy-pastable resources down in the description. Uh, and we're going to go through the whole thing from start to finish, so hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the simplest way we can get Jitsi hosted in the cloud and integrated into our Foundry game. There's a few things that you'll need to get this going. You're going to need an SSH key, which we'll go over generating in a moment, a DigitalOcean account, and a domain name. We're using DigitalOcean because it has a marketplace of free one-click installable applications, including one for Jitsi that will reduce the amount of work we had to do significantly and make sure that we're all set up as similarly as possible. If you don't already use DigitalOcean for something else, you can use my referral link in the description, which will get you $100 in credit, but it does have to be used within 60 days, so really you'll just wind up getting two months free on your Jitsi server and your Foundry game, which I'll have a video on hosting soon as well. Uh, I, don't I don't earn any money from it, but I do get DigitalOcean credit, which will reduce my own server cost. If you don't want to do that, uh, that's no problem at all. You can just go to DigitalOcean.com and set up your account that way. Uh, before we do anything uh, in DigitalOcean though, I also mentioned that you'll need a domain name. A domain name is what you enter in the URL bar to go to a website like youtube.com. Uh, we'll use it to access our Jitsi server and later on our Foundry game, so pick a name that you like. Uh, lots of companies sell them like Namecheap, GoDaddy, Google Domains, and others. Uh, I like Google Domains because it's only 12 bucks a year and it includes privacy protection so people can't find your name and email address by looking up your domain name and who the administrator on the account is. Uh, but like I said, you can use any service that you like. Uh, once you've got a domain name, we can take care of the last thing that I mentioned and that's an SSH key. To the non-technical people out there, an SSH key is basically a secure way of connecting to a server without a password. Uh, it's easier to do it with a password, but it's not as safe and it's pretty simple to do with SSH. Uh, let's make one for ourselves now. There are text guides for doing this in Windows, Mac OS, and Linux in the description, but I'll be showing it in Windows since that's what most people are using. Uh, in Windows, we're going to use an extremely old tool called PuTTY, uh, which you'll see has a kind of bizarre capitalization scheme and a truly terrible website, but it is easy to get our download, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All we have to do is click on Stable up here at the top, and then click the version that we want. Uh, pretty much everyone should be good with the 64-bit option, but if you're running a very old machine, you may need the 32-bit version. Uh, once we've got it downloaded, we can install it, uh, which is easy with just a few clicks. Once it's finished, uh, we can go to our start menu and type putty gen, that's P-U-T-T-Y-G-E-N. Uh, we're going to use this to make the key to our server. Make sure your settings match mine, which are the default, so you shouldn't really have to do anything, uh, and hit generate. Then flail your mouse wildly over the window to give it some random data to use to make a strong key, and we'll be in business. Add a password in the key phrase and confirm passphrase fields, uh, and then hit save private key. This ensures that even if someone manages to take our key file, they'll still need a password to access our server. Let's check out how to find where PuttyGen saved our key now. Uh, we're gonna open up File Explorer and go to your users folder, and in the end, add a slash and dot SSH to the end to get into the hidden folder. 
Uh, here we can see the private key that we just made, and let's jump back into PuttyGen real quick. The long string of text you see at the top is what's called your public key. We're going to give this public key to DigitalOcean in just a moment, and it will be able to compare the public key to the private key we just found in, Fi in File Explorer to tell if we should be able to access the server. Speaking of DigitalOcean, we can now set up our server. If you haven't created your account yet, go ahead and do so. Uh, you'll have to put some billing details in and give them a project name. I called mine Foundry Hosting and picked web application for the what is your project for question. The rest can be skipped as it isn't important. Uh, once that's done, you should be looking at a screen a lot like this one. Uh, we can start by clicking on the giant new droplet button. Now under choose an image, find the marketplace tab and type in Jitsi, J-I-T-S-I. If it doesn't already appear in the recommended for you section. Uh, we can leave the plan as standard, but we'll want to reduce our cost from the $40 a month plan down to the $5 a month plan, as that's all that's really necessary, unless you've got a very large group. Now, we can keep scrolling, and you can select whichever data center is closest to you. Since I'm on the East Coast, that's New York. Uh, we can skip the next couple options until we get to authentication. Here we'll want to click New SSH Key and bring back our Putty Gen window from earlier. Copy everything from the text window at the top and paste it into DigitalOcean. Uh, then we'll give it a name like Putty Key and hit Add SSH Key. Then we can set the host name if we want to. I set mine to be Jitsi. Uh, we should be all good unless you want to uh, add backups, but they shouldn't really be necessary since the server won't be storing any data for us. Now we'll give uh, we'll just give the droplet a moment to get set up. Essentially what is happening right now is we're setting up Jitsi with a pre-configured system that the Jitsi programmers have made as a starting point. Once it's finished, we're going to go in and make some changes uh, so that it'll work with Foundry. Now, we've got our droplet with the host name showing over here, our server's IP address in the middle, which is basically the street address for our server, and a three-dot menu to the right with some additional functionality. We need to set up our domain so that it points to our server now. To do that, we're going to copy the IP address by clicking on it, go to whatever service you purchase your domain from, and find where they keep the DNS settings. Here we're going to add an A record, which tells our domain where to take people when someone accesses it. And you may have to refer to some help documentation or something with whomever you bought your domain from to actually figure out how and where to do this. Uh, we're going to add what's called a subdomain though. So a subdomain is the same thing as your domain, but with a prefix. Uh, so for example, jitsi.encounterlibrary.com instead of just encounterlibrary.com. You can do that normally by adding the prefix in the, uh, the, prefix in the field instead of the at sign like so. Uh, then enter the IP that we copied uh, from DigitalOcean into the IP address field and save your changes. With that out of the way, we can get into our server. Go to your start menu and type putty, not putty gen, and this will open a similar program where we can enter our server's IP address in the hostname field and make sure the port is set to 22. Then let's go over to the SSH section under connection in the sidebar, expand it, and select auth. At the bottom of this window, we can click the browse button to navigate to the putty key we made earlier and select it. So we don't have to do this every time. Scroll up in the sidebar back to session and type Jitsi server and click save. Now, whenever we want to connect to our Jitsi server, we can just open PuTTY, click on that setting and hit load. Now it's time for you to enter the matrix and feel like a hacker. Click open and you'll get a command prompt and a window talking about connecting to a server for the first time. This is all okay. Accept it and then enter our username, which is root, R-O-O-T. You'll then need to enter the password we made earlier for our SSH key and we're in. There's probably some packages that can be updated and it'll say something about a server restart. Let's get the server fully updated and then we can go forward. Go to the description of this video and copy the item denoted with copy number one and paste it into your putty command prompt by copying like normal, clicking on the window and then right clicking. This will paste the content in and ensure that there are no mistakes. We'll wait a moment for everything to download, install and update. Eventually you may get a prompt and all you have to do is select keep the local version currently installed and continue on. Once everything is done, just type reboot and the server will reboot and we'll get kicked out of our command prompt. We can close it, open putty again, hit load on our Jitsi settings and then connect once more, entering our username and password as usual. 
uh, we've got a clean system now that's fully updated and we can keep going with Jitsi. Go ahead and enter period slash zero one underscore video c o n f dot s h in the command prompt. Enter the domain name that we set up earlier, like jitsi.encounterlibrary.com, and select the option to generate a self signed certificate. Then, once everything is finished, type period slash zero two underscore https dot sh. It will ask you for an email address. This is just for updates about your SSL certificate, which is what makes the connection between Foundry and Jitsi secure, uh, and you aren't going to get any spam uh, by putting your email address in here. Let's also enable the firewall by running UFW enable. With all of that out of the way, we can move to our last couple of steps. Uh, this step will make it so our Foundry game can connect to our Jitsi server. Go to the description of the video once more and grab the line under copy number two and paste it into your command prompt by right clicking again and then type slash your subdomain dot your domain dot com dot c o n f, which in my case is jitsi dot encounter library dot com dot c o n f and hit enter. This opens a text editor in our command prompt where we can make some configuration changes. Use your arrow keys to navigate down until you see hashtag Bosch or pound Bosch uh, if you're an old phone user or Octothorpe Bosch if you're an old cartographer. Uh, once you've found it, use your arrow keys to get to the end of the third line and create a new line. Hit spacebar a few times until your cursor lines up underneath the P and then copy and paste that line under or copy and paste the line under copy number three in the description by right clicking in the command prompt just like before. Uh, do the same thing for copy number four through copy number six. Then hit control plus S followed by control X as in X-Men to close out the editor. Then enter service Injinx restart, that's N-G-I-N-X uh, restart to make sure our new settings are running. Currently, anyone can start a meeting on our Jitsi server, which we definitely don't want. It's time to make our Jitsi server a little bit more secure by adding a username and password to it. A lot of doing this was simplified uh, by a developer named Andrea Giacobino, so a huge amount of thanks to them. Uh, the first thing you'll want to do is write out export capital J-I-T-S-I -I underscore domain uh, equals quotation marks J-I-T-S-I -I dot encounterlibrary.com using your domain name in place of mine uh, as usual and none of that has any spaces in it. Uh, with that out of the way, copy and paste all of the text underneath copy number seven, paste it in with a right click, hit enter, and then do the same for copy number eight and copy number nine. Once that's done, we can make our user. We can do that by entering prosodictyl spelled P-R-O-S-O-D-Y-C-T-L register foundry cash sign j i t s i underscore domain all capital just like before uh, followed by my secret password where foundry is whatever username you want to use and my secret password is whatever password you want then we can restart a few services so everything is up to date with our changes by doing service j i c o f o space restart uh, with a space after service as well, just so that's clear. Uh, then we can also do service space Jitsi dash video bridge two, all one word uh, with the number two space restart and service space prosody, P-R-O-S-O-D-Y space restart. You did it. You did all the complicated stuff. You are strong and wise, and I am very proud of you. Let's get to the easy stuff now. All we have to do now is open up Foundry, add the Jitsi module, which is called Jitsi Web RTC Client and made by the excellent uh, Luvo London, or it might be Love O London. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce it. Uh, launch our game, enable the module, and then go to configure settings and configure audio slash video. If you're using the Foundry application running on your computer, you'll probably see a red box here saying that you need an SSL certificate. Uh, I've got a link in the description that tells you what you need to do to get this working. 
Other than that, just ensure you have audio slash video enabled and then go to the server tab, change the choose signaling server option to custom server and enter your domain name for the signaling server URL. In my case, that's jitsi.encounterlibrary.com. Then enter your signaling server username, which is the username we made earlier, followed by the at sign and our domain. In my case, that's foundry at jitsi.encounterlibrary.com. Then enter your signaling server password from earlier. In my case, that's my secret password. Uh, and ensure relay server configuration is set to provided by signaling server. Hit save changes and go over to your module settings. In the settings here for Jitsi MUC URL, enter conference dot followed by your Jitsi domain like so. Then for Jitsi focus URL, enter focus dot the same way. And lastly for Jitsi Bosch URL type slash slash followed by your domain name and slash HTTP dash bind. Click save changes and you should be fully configured to work with Jitsi. Uh, there is a bonus to having Jitsi set up which is that you also have a full-fledged Zoom alternative running that won't require accounts and should be good, uh, should have good performance for any family video chats or anything like that that you may wanna have. Uh, before we close out, let's take a look at that. Head over to your domain, for me, that's jitsi.encounterlibrary.com, and you're greeted with this information screen. You can enter a name in the start a new meeting field and hit go. It will say that a host is needed to start the session, click. I am the host and enter your username and password. The room will be created and you can send the link to anyone you want to join up and video chat with. Uh, you'll need to give it permissions to access your camera and mic and then you'll be good to go. If you've got any issues, like if you're trying to access your domain and the uh, Jitsi window, uh, the Jitsi website doesn't come up, uh, then you've probably misconfigured your domain name and you'll want to reach out to your uh, uh, service, uh, their support agents, and they should be able to tell you where your domain is pointing to and if you've got anything misconfigured. Uh, you can also feel free to post in the comments and I'll try to help. I'm not a web hosting expert, so I may not be able to get to it, uh, but hopefully some other people in the comments may be able to provide uh, some help as well. But anyway, thanks so much to everybody for watching i'm sorry that this was still so technical but hopefully the video and copy pasteable text was enough for you to make it through uh, a self-hosting foundry video will be coming out soon but i may release another video in the meantime as i'm getting it prepped uh, i recently did a stream showing off incarnate's new battle map editor and i'm thinking about doing an incarnate's basic video uh, as well to show you how you can use it for world regional and battle map making so let me know if that sounds good to you Stay safe, everybody, and I will see you in the next one.